Before starting, if you will use a custom walking animation, you need to do the following. And if you don't know about these, you can check out my video about animation editor. Set the animation priority to movement. Set the frame rate. I recommend 60 FPS. Click the loop button to enable loops. I also recommend playing with duration. If your animation looks too slow, you will want to decrease it. And last one, click the gear button and click on show animation events. Now a new line will appear. Add to animation events, on right footstep, and left footstep. Name them something reasonable, because we will use them in scripts. I'll use these for the video. Align the animation events correctly, because sound will play, when it reaches that marker. For the next part, you will need to grab a script from game scripts. Find your character in the workspace and copy the animate local script. Then stop the game and paste that into starter character scripts folder. Expand scripts children and you'll see some values with animations parented to them. There is an animation ID property for each animation instance. Just replace your custom animation ID with the one at the end, if you use one. If you won't use custom animations, you can skip this part. You can also change other animations such as dances, but you shall do a separate system for it instead of using these. I'll move on to scripts, but before that, I want to inform that I made this for respect filtering enabled property of sound service set as true. If yours isn't true, you can do them all with a local script. However, I don't recommend turning it off. I'm starting with server script now. Here, we just set a player added event, and then a character added event. Make sure to put these to first lines, so you won't have issues. And then we get content provider service, which we will be using for our sounds, and then characters humanoid object. I created a table called sound IDs. I'm not only using an ID here, but I also include names for every sound files. Next function is for separating them. These two empty tables are for both foots, so right footstep sound will come from left foot. In this function, I create a sound instance first, and then I split our past argument, which will be from sound ID's table, and it will return a table with ID and material name. If you don't know how this works, you can look it up on developer hub. It basically splits a string from a string, and in this case, it's space, and then it returns a table containing splitted objects. First one is the first value in the table, and then we set sound's ID a name. After that, we set emitter size and maximum distance. If you don't know what are these, emitter size value shows after how many chunks, that sound will start fading. Play with these values, and you'll find a good one. These last three is for setting a higher volume for some sounds. You don't need to do this, and we return the sound object at the end of this function. With these two loops, we convert all sounds to sounds objects and set their parents as a foot. If you want a two-dimensional sound, you can add them to an invisible GUI too. And also we add all sounds objects to their tables, so we can preload the assets. Same thing as for other foot. We use content provider service to preload all of our sounds. This is optional but highly recommended. For the next part, we will need a remote event. I added one in replicated storage called event. This will get fired on each footstep. If your game will be for so many players, you might need to try a different method. We connect an event to remote event with using player and foot arguments. And then we get character and humanoid and store them as a variable. And then there is a find sound variable. It will find our desired sound file from an object, which will be a foot. Next one is sound play function. These if statements are for a defining a sound. I used some sounds for two different materials, so I rename them in the function, so the same sound will play. Rest of this function is about playing the sound. After these if statements, we check if there is a sound file with materials name. If it is nil, we return, which will end the function. And then if there is, we use find sound function, and play the sound. And we use the function. We use humanoid's floor material here. It will be an enum value and enum values also have a name property, so we directly pass enum's name. For the next part, you will need to have default footstep sounds disabled. I have a video about it, you can check it out, if you don't know how. Moving to the animate script. I added left and right foot variables on the top of the script. Find line 470, 
This run enum track is a default variable, which has running animation loaded into it. In this part, it loads animation to humanoid. It changes run anim name to run, so I think these run and walk animations are same. Roblox has only wonderful movement animation, doesn't it? Remember the animation events we added? In these lines, we connect an event for that animation event. This event is called Get Marker Reached Signal. We connect it for both left and right foots. And inside these, we pass foot object, which will be used in our server script. These are for our custom animations. However if you are using default animations, you need a different method. Luckily they also have animation events for footsteps. We still use run anim track, colon, get marker reach signal, and then we pass the name of the marker, which is footstep, f, and s are capital. It will look like this. The rest are same. You still fire the server, so let's try it out. That was it for this video. Hope you understood. See you in another one.